representing company is Aidegen with CEO Anders Karlsson. Welcome. Thank you, Livia. Uh, I will today give you a brief update on the status in Aidegen and uh, our development projects within Torgenic Cell Therapies. Uh, the agenda uh, today is a short introduction to the company, uh, our cell therapy uh, and our and the unwanted immune reactions that we want to treat, uh, the technology and the platform, uh, the company platform and our uh, main steps in the development plans, also key activities for this year and ahead, and also we will have some questions and discussions after that. Um, Irian is a biotech company located in Lund and founded in 2008. We are listed on the Nasdaq First North since June 2020. Uh, we have a new uh, IP situation. We sent in our latest patent application uh, in uh, December 2019 in, in UK. And we also sent in the PCT application a year later in December 2020, which gives us a market exclusivity for 20 years, if successful. We are developing Trogenic cell therapies and the first product into first in human clinical trial is our project to cover hemophilia A patients that has developed antibodies towards the treatment with factor eight. We have also second validation earlier. Uh, we have uh, received the Horizon 2020 funding, which gave the company around 30 million Swedish kronas in 2017. We also, for hemophilia A and the indication, their uh, orphan drug designations, which gives us a favorable situation for the regulatory pathway ahead. And we're also planning to start uh, the clinical trial in the second quarter this year. To give an overview, we have a treatment that is possible to managing considerable unmet medical need. And we are aiming to prevent unwanted immune responses from the immune system. We have a proprietary technology which covers uh, as well as the uh, technology platform uh, the manufacturing process and also indications that we are trying to manage with our Torgenic cell therapy. We also have very interesting value drivers ahead. We are moving into first patient first visit now in the second quarter 2022 and also ahead of us in end 2023 we are also aiming to send in the clinical trial application for the next indication IDOT covering transplantation. We have had a very busy end of 2021. We optimized our manufacturing process together with our partner in the third and fourth quarter of 2021. We also followed that up with a qualification of that process. We have also prepared for clinical trial meeting a lot of potential clinical trial centers. And also in the end of this year, we sent in uh, the clinical trial application to the Swedish regulatory authorities, Läkemedelsverket, uh, December 17, and follow that up also with an application sent in to the Norwegian uh, Medical Product Agency, January 3. And now we are expecting the review time period to be around 90 days. And as a result of all this work and as a part of the planning forward, we also now announced the rights issue in end of December and that has been finalized and that gave us 50 million gross uh, in February. And we also have a new opportunity with uh, warrants to add additional 40 million in to that funding round. Just a brief introduction to our technology. What is cell therapy? Cell therapy aims to treat diseases by using cells to repair or change other cells in the body. And thereafter the cells are cultured outside the body before being administered into the patient. And you can both use autologous, which is patient's own cells, and cells from a donor 
what you name uh, allergenic cell therapies. And we are using the patient's own cells. We have an autologous cell therapy within IDOGEN. Just to give you a brief introduction to our cell therapy, we are using the dendritic cells, and the dendritic cells plays a key role in the immune system and the response of the immune system. The dendritic cells has the um, possibility to decide whether a cell or a molecule is a friend or a foe. And if it perceives something as an enemy, it activates an Im immune response. That's what you see on the left-hand side. If it finds out that something is a friend, then it instead downregulates the immune response. What you see in, 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 in the bottom of this slide, you see the regulatory T cells, and they are very important for our technology because they have to aim to create a long-term tolerance of uh, the cell therapy towards this specific antigen that we are treating. There is a lot of different cells and molecules that the dendritic cells should sort out. It can be virus, bacteria, and cancer cells, which they should attack and initiate an immune response. It can also be other things. It can be pharmaceuticals, treatment. Uh, it can be also uh, the body's own cells and organs. It can also be transplants. And here you instead should tolerate and this is what we are targeting with our cell therapy. If it looks like this, then it's good. But if you end up in a situation where the immune system starts to attack biological and very important uh, pharmaceuticals, then we have a problems. And what we do here is that we try to uh, take away this wrongly uh, activated immune response that you will in that case receive and instead um, program the immune system to tolerate uh, this specific antigen instead. So we are creating a very specific antigen specific uh, 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 tolerance of uh, these antigens and we at the same time normalize the immune system. We have a patient-tailored uh, tolgenic cell therapy. We use the patient's own cells. We collect the cells at the patient's hospital. We thereafter send them to our manufacturing lab where we introduce the monocytes for the specific uh, antigen that is the one that initiate uh, this unwanted immune response. And together with our proprietary tolerance inducer, we create these tolgenic dendritic cells. And these tolgenic dendritic cells are actually the cell therapy to be used within the patient. So thereafter we put the cells, the cell therapy into a frozen stat state and send it back to the patient's host hospital and give you treatment for one to three times after that. We took a very important decision in end 2019 where we decided to instead of manufacture our own cell therapy in our own lab, we instead used uh, a very experienced and uh, world leading uh, manufacturer of, of cell therapy and has done this process from moving our innovation into a GMP uh, uh, approved product for the clinical trial at Radboud University Medical Center in, in Holland. This has been a very successful step and we are now ready to go to start the clinical trial in the second quarter this year. If we summarize uh, the different unwanted immu immune response that we can manage with our technology, we first have the anti-drug antibodies where the body reacts towards biological drugs and hampers their effect. We also have transplant rejections, patients that today need a lifelong treatment with immunosuppressants. Then you could instead uh, ma manage the unwanted immune reaction towards the organ with our cell therapy. And we also have the big group of autoimmune diseases. And in general, the technology platform aims to stop these unwanted immune reactions towards all these three different situations, conditions, or diseases. We have also furthermore uh, developed three different projects, IDO8, 
I2T and I2A ID, and I should briefly also give you a little bit insight in these three different uh, projects. We are starting with Hemophilia A, a patient that has created antibodies towards the treatment with Factor 8. Factor 8 is the general treatment, uh, the basic treatment, the standard treatment for managing these patients with severe Hemophilia A. But in around 25 to 30% of these patients, uh, the immune system attacks and makes uh, the, and destroys the effect of the factor A treatment by antibodies. And the standard care for these patients is to give increasing doses of factor VIII treatment. And in that way, over two, six months up to three years, create a, 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 a tolerance towards this treatment. Our case is instead that we offer to use a cell therapy, using it with one to two infusions, and instead create a uh, tolerance in that way, and to then be able to continue to treat with factor VIII. Briefly about I2A, uh, ITI treatment, which is today the standard treatment when you create antibodies towards factor VIII. You usually need to continue with this ITI treatment between six months and up to three years. Uh, the approach is only successful in around 60% of the cases. Uh, and the plan is to first treat with ITI and then go back to treat with factor VIII treatment. The same as we are offering with I-8. The cost of ITA treatment is around 1.2 to 2.3 million US dollars, which is around 10 to 20 million Swedish kronas. And the average treatment of these patients costs around 15 million Swedish kronas. We are quite progressed in the development process of I-8. We are now moving into treating the first patients with our terrenic cell therapy. And the plan is to get an approval from the Swedish authorities now in the second quarter of 2022. The next step is to enroll the patients in this study. It would be a phase one, phase two study. And we aim to have the data ready in 2023. Looking into kidney transplantation, our next project, around 100,000 patients gets a new kidney every year globally. And these patients get, as a standard treatment, lifelong immunosuppressive treatment uh, to keep away the risk for rejection of the organs. There is a big medical need here since these patients also get severe infections, cancers, but also a direct nephrotoxic effect on the kidneys with the current treatment. We aim to reduce the immunological response or even the best case also totally take away the immunological response with our treatment. We are using the patient's cells and we then add uh, cells from the donor and using that to create a tolerance for the organ at the time for transplantation. And the aim is to then tapering out the treatment with immunosuppressive drugs. We have learned a lot while developing IDO8, so we are quite progressed also in this project. What we have learned to develop our technology platform can also be used for the development of the IDO T uh, product. We are now working very much to design in detail how the, how the treatment will look like. And we are moving towards a first uh, pilot proof of concept. Next year, we are moving towards main uh, proof of concept, but also starting to prepare for a clinical trial and send in a clinical trial application in the end of 2023. And the plan is then to start the clinical trial early uh, 2024. If we then move into the big group of autoimmune diseases, uh, then we have more than 100 different diseases, and they are normally treated with immunosuppressive treatments, most of them. 
if we can find the antigen, these kind of diseases could be added to our technology platform. And here we are looking into different ways to utilize our knowledge about uh, creating tolerance. And here we are very open also to line up with partners, specific knowledge in specific disease, and that together with them develop a specific treatment for this kind of diseases. If we're looking into the key activities uh, from now uh, and ahead, as I said, we are very busy now to start up the clinical trial. We are approaching uh, clinical trial centers not only in Sweden, not only in Nor Nordic, but also key centers out in the Europe. And plan is to start in the second quarter. For IoT, we are now working towards a pilot proof of concept of our technology on our platform for tolerogenic cell therapy. Next year, we will then move a step forward in our clinical trial and also be able to finalize that before end of 2023. For IDOT, we are then making the main proof of concept and also preparing for clinical trial and sending the clinical trial application. And 2024, we are receiving the data from the IDO8 study. We also start, plan to start the clinical trial for IDO-T. So to summarize my presentation, we have developed a, a, a treatment which can manage considerable unmet medical need. We are aiming to prevent unwanted immune responses within the patient. Uh, we have a proprietary platform technology uh, and we have the ability to cover both the platform, the process to manufacture, but also the specific indications. Uh, we also have in very interesting uh, value driving events ahead. Uh, first step will be the first patient first visit planned to be in the second quarter of this year and ahead of us we also have a lot larger indication in the um, transplantation, IDOT, which we plan to send in a clinical, clinical trial application in the end of 2023. That was a brief update. Thank you so much for listening today. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I would like to know a bit more about how you can adapt the IDOGEN platform to different types of uh, medical conditions and uh, diseases. Uh, we are lucky uh, to have a technology platform and from that we, we have the basics in place. But the critical thing here is to define the antigen that initiate uh, the immune response because that is uh, an important part, as I've shown, in our technology. So if we have the antigen and we can load it into our cell therapy, we can very much just put it into the platform and make more product into our development. And what can you tell us about the study design for the clinical trial with IDO8? Uh, we have applied for a phase one, phase two A, which means that we will cover safety uh, and a dose escalation phase, which gives us an indication of which kind of dose, the size of the dose we need to use. Furthermore, when we are covering the phase two part of it, we will also be able to make a challenge after half year of treatment, which will then will give us an indication if we still have the tolerance towards the antibodies. Uh, and that will actually give us a proof of concept for ID8, but also the full concept, uh, proof of concept for our technology as such. So this is a very interesting study for us that we're looking into now. Interesting, and thank you for being here today, Anders. Thank you, Olivia.